In this video, I want to describe augmented Dicky Fuller tests, which test for whether we have a non stationary time series, which is slightly more complicated than, let's say, an AR1 process. So, the idea with the Dicky Fuller tests, as we described them thus far, was that we would run a regression of the change in yt on alpha plus delta times yt minus 1 plus some error et. And the idea here is that under the null hypothesis that we have a unit root, the null hypothesis here was that delta equals zero against the alternative, which delta is less than zero. So that was the case for an AR1 process. We sort of went through that in detail. But how do we actually go ahead and test for a unit root in the presence of higher order processes? Well, it turns out that if we were interested, or if we thought rather, that YT followed an AR2 process, then we might think that what we would do is we would re regress delta YT on alpha plus delta times YT minus 1, and then we'd include something with a YT minus 2. Well, it turns out the correct thing to do is actually to include another term, which is actually a lagged delta term, so the delta y t minus 1 plus e t. And it turns out that under the null hypothesis that we have a unit root in a AR2 process, again, we can prove that delta should be equal to zero. And the alternative here that we have a stable AR2 process is that delta is less than zero. And actually, this generalizes quite well to any sort of order process or any sort of order AR process. So in general, what we do is we include enough lags in our delta. So we include delta times y t minus 1 plus the sum from i equals 1 to, let's say, h, where h is some finite amount, times beta times capital delta y t minus i. And each of these um, different delta terms, or capital delta, because I, I should mention I've got a small delta here and a capital delta, which is the delta I've been referring to, has a different coefficient on it. And then finally, we have our error term. And just as the case with an AR1 process, the null hypothesis here is that delta equals naught against the alternative, which is delta is less than naught. And under the null hypothesis, we conclude that we have non or a non-stationary time series, and the alternative is that we have a stationary time series. Okay, so how many of these lags should we actually add? Well, it turns out that even under the null hypothesis being true, these lagged delta terms actually, or the estimators for these betas, actually have t distributions. So we can actually test for whether these terms are significant or not just using normal t-tests, or if we're testing all of them, we can just do f-tests on them. So basically, we want to continue adding these delta terms whilst they're significant. If we're adding delta terms and they're not significant by our ordinary t-statistics, then we shouldn't be adding them. Another way to think about this is to continue adding these lags, lag values of capital delta yt minus i, until we have no serial correlation in our delta, uh, in our error term rather. Because if we do have serial correlation in our error term, then that is symptomatic of the fact that we're probably dealing with a slightly more complicated process, so we need to include further lags. So we want to continue adding these lags until essentially standard tests suggest that we don't have any serial correlation in our error term. And then we can just proceed as normal because we're going to be testing the null hypothesis that delta equals zero against the alternative which delta is less than zero. And it turns out that we can do exactly the same as we did before, in which case we compare the t statistic which we obtain under our least squares estimator of delta, delta hat, with the Dickey-Fuller test, or the Dickey-Fuller table rather, or Dickey-Fuller distribution, and we compare it with the critical values from that distribution, remembering that both of these things are going to be negative, so the t is going to be negative and the Dickey-Fuller value is going to be negative. And it turns out that we can use exactly the same Dickey-Fuller distribution as we used previously. We do, there's no need for a new Dickey-Fuller distribution in these circumstances.